Hi, Richard Knutson here, and I recently gave a presentation at the Extreme 2010 show in Las Vegas. It's a great show, by the way. And I gave a presentation on what's new in workflows, Dynamic CRM 2011. And at the risk of having this recording being just a little bit out of context, in case you didn't see the whole presentation, I wanted to record the demo, the second demo that I did in the presentation. What I want to do here in this demo is show you how to build a dialog to create a opportunity record, um, basically simplify the creation of an opportunity record. And maybe we've got a forms challenged executive who doesn't want to spend the time filling out all the detailed information and inside sales will come along later and uh, fill in the rest. So we just want to use this dialog to gather only the essential information and we'll create the opportunity record. And when you're designing these things, you want to ask yourselves questions like the ones you see here. What fields are required? What entity do we want to create it for? It's a non-trivial question. And really, how do we construct the prompt and response pairs that you need in these dialogues to get the information that we need? So what I'm going to do here is build it. We'll build a dialogue from scratch. So here I am in Dynamic CRM 2011, and I'm using CRM Online beta version, but it is functionally identical in everything you'll see here to the on-premise version. And what I want to do is go to the Process Center, click Processes, and create a new one. I mentioned this is going to be a dialog, so instead of Workflow, let's select Dialog. And it turns out that I do want to make this run against the account entity. And what I'm going to call this, Build Opportunity Record. Click OK to create it. Okay, so here we are in my nice new empty build dialog, the design environment. A couple of things mentioned about this. Notice that there's no options for automatic workflows for dialogs. Dialogs are always on demand and always require user uh, intervention to run them. That's what they're for. So now we've got the basics configured. Let's minimize that. Input arguments are used to collect and pass values to child workflows that we call from here. I'm not going to do those in this one, so I won't use that. And variables would be used for intermediate values that could be useful in this dialog. I'm not going to use either of those, but just to give you some background. What I want to do here in the steps section is to add a step, and I'm going to start by adding a create record step. I'm going to kind of work backwards here. I'll create the opportunity record, give this a name. And remember I said what the dialog needs to do is collect information from the user first to put into this opportunity record. But the reason that I create the opportunity record first when I'm designing it is so that I can go into the opportunity in the workflow design environment and see what fields are required. So what do I need to put into account? Well, it's going to be account. Um, the account that I'm starting on, that's why I chose account, by the way, to, uh, to design this dialog against. My customized version of our opportunity form here that we use at my company, we've got a line of business. It's a lookup. And notice that it's required. So anything that's required in here, I'm going to have to collect that information somehow from the user as part of the dialog process or make some determinations in this bit here to fill those in. Okay, so what are the required fields? What do I need to get something into? Well, account, line of business, owner has to be populated, I need something in topic, I'm going to need something in close date because that's required. Estimated revenue not required, but it's a good good practice to put something in there. So those are the things that I want to, I'm going to need to create dialog functionality to grab the, that, those pieces of information. So that's what the dialog's for. I'm going to change insert to four step and now what I want to start doing is building out the dialog. So I'm going to go to add step and what I want to add here is a page. I have to have a page to contain the prompts and responses of my dialog, the whole point of dialog. So here's my page. I'll give it a name, collect info, and then here I want prompt and response. A prompt and response to collect the estimated revenue. Start with that. This is an easy one. Get a little prompt text there. And I'll call this response type, single line of text. And the data type that I want to collect here is float for the estimated revenue value. That's all I need. This one. That was an easy one. Got estimated revenue. 
But now I want a prompt for the line of business. If I add a prompt in response for that, and I'll call this line of business, if I go into set properties here, what I want, once I put a little prompt text in there, I want the response type to be an option set pick list, but I don't want to have to hardwire values in here. This is what I want to query CRM data for. I want to build a query that contains my lines of business in case we update those. So let's save and close for now. And then I'm going to build the query and come back in here and populate this. So now what I want to do is immediately before this page, I want to add a step to query CRM data. I wondered what that's for? That's the purpose of this. So I'll call this line of business query. Click set properties and I get a little specialized version of advanced find here. I'll select the entity that I want to query lines of business. Now I just click find. One of the things you'll usually notice this uses the default advanced find view and I don't need this created on. It doesn't add much value. So I'll go to edit columns and remove it. Now here's the line of business query that I want. Got the lines of business there. I can choose save and close. So now that's filled in. A little scary red cross goes away. And now I'll go back into my prompt and response for line of business and use the results of that query to populate this pick list. So instead of hardwiring values, we'll query CRM data. Now that I've got the line of business query there, there it goes. We've only got one column in there, so I'll select it. That's the name, and when we run this, you can see how it works. Okay, so now I've got the dialogue portion done. I've queried CRM data. I've got a prompt and response pair that will prompt the user to select the line of business, estimated revenue. Now let's go back and finish off that opportunity, the dynamic values here. I'll do this relatively quickly, but if you have a, if you have a little bit of experience with workflows, you should be able to follow this populate account, just grab account. That's why I wrote this dialog against the account record type. Line of business. And I want to look for a local value and I don't want the line of business query. That's the query. I want the line of business. This is the prompt and response value there. So I'll add that. Pop that into the line of business. The owner is going to be the owner of the account. So I select account and look for then grab the owner attribute and pop that into owner. For topic, I could hardwire it, or I could do this. How about I'll use dynamic values to do. Grab the line of business, and this is eventually going to say it'll substitute in the line of business, and then it'll use that static text opportunity for, and then let's put the account name in there. So that's a good example of using dynamic values. So it's going to say line of business, opportunity for, and then account name. And see what this looks like when we're done with this. Everything else up there, I'll leave it as is. I'll say revenue is user provided, and then the estimated revenue field. That's why I did the prompt and response for estimated revenue. This is a simple response text. It's the only that's the, the way that the dialogue environment refers to a user provided response like that. So I'll plug that in there. Estimated close date, we don't really have anything for that, so what I'll do is just kind of make a little pragmatic compromise. And let's suppose this is just going to be seven days after using dynamic values here. Process, select process, that's the, uh, the actual running process, and it's got an execution time variable. So I can add, so this will give me a nice way to do, you know, just to kind of arbitrarily say, okay, estimated close date is seven days after it's collected. Remember our, my scenario is inside sales is going to come back and clean this thing up anyway. So I don't need to worry too much about the nitpicky details there. Alright, we're ready to go. I've got the query. I've got my page with the two prompt and response pairs that are going to control the user interface. And the values that are collected are going to be used by the subsequent create opportunity 
This is just the same as the workflow create opportunity action to create that record. Let's go ahead and save and close it. Build opportunity record. Let's activate it. And now we'll run it. Let's see how it works. Let's navigate to an account. Pick on my company. I'll open it up, although I can run it from the grid. We got the account form open, start dialog. Got this build opportunity record dialog activated. Select it. And here's my prompt and responses. The first one with the results of the query. Suppose this is a uh, project consulting services opportunity. So an executive su selects that, and it's maybe a fifty thousand dollar opportunity. Enter that. That's all they got to do. Simplifying the build opportunity process so that even the most form challenged executive can handle that. And what did we just do? Now let's go down and see what happened. Remember, dialogues are not asynchronous. They are synchronous. They happen in real time, so you don't have to wait 30 seconds for the records to be created or however long you have to wait for a workflow to create that. So here's the $50,000 project consulting services opportunity for Magenium that got created there. If you open this up, you'll see what the dialogue did for us. Attached it to the right account. Use the selected value of the line of business that we grabbed from the query, assigned to the owner of the account, use dynamic values to create a good topic name for us, put $50,000 in there, and added 7 to today's date to uh, make this estimated close date the 17th. And that is how you can use a new dialogue, one of the two types of processes in Dynamic CRM 2011, for one of what I think is probably the more obvious scenarios for these things, which is to simplify the uh, creation of otherwise complex records. So that's one scenario, and another one, which I will show you in, uh, in other uh, recordings, is a uh, sort of a, a guided conversation or a scripted conversation for maybe case routing or lead or opportunity qualification, that sort of thing. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful, and Please uh, feel free to visit my blog for lots of other content like this one, dynamicserumtrickbag.com. Richard Knudsen, over and out.